Wow! I feel the goo. I know that I won't know. I feel the goo. I knew that I would now. So, so much, much goo. goo. So, so much, much goo. goo. I, I got, got a you. you. Yo, what's up, everybody? We're finally here. Goo cast number seven with the one and only uh, Joel Smith. And I'm talking Joshua Smith here. Um, dude, I'm excited. I, I've so, been wanting to I'm get you on. Too. I've been wanting to get you on, but you you kept saying I was trying to dodge you, but I I really wasn't. I just couldn't find the right day, you know. I chose the banlist day specifically. Sure. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, you chose a good one. You did choose a good date. Yeah, yeah. that is true. Yeah, so we have a lot to talk about, guys. We have a lot. I'm talking about a lot, lot, a lot, a lot, like that, like that. Um, so like the bunny to us today, and I was so sad. I mean, I was very happy when they hit me up with Nash. There is a banlist. I was like. I'm gonna ban your fucking ass because you are trolling in my Dude, chat. You know, no. Farfa almost banned me from the chat. I told him, and Farfa almost banned me from. I'm like, bro, bro, have some faith. Like, do I look like a troll? Do I look like a troll? Oh man, don't answer that. Anyways, yo, Josh, it's ha happy to have you on. I know the ban list is on everybody's yeah. minds right now, but we kind of want to just we want everyone to get you to know you a little bit better. I'm, I'm sure everyone knows you're like a household name by now, but. Uh, but like your origin story, right? Like how'd you like how'd you get into yeah. content creation? Where you started? Where you are now? Um, and and I guess we'll just open the floor up with that and and go from there. <clears throat> We're going way back. Oh, way back, way like, back, way way back, way back. Yeah. Okay. Oh <laughs> like the, the origin. Okay. Like oh, like, Josh, like how did yeah. you come to be? When did you start playing Yu-Gi-Oh? You know the good good. Yeah. Josh, Josh is gonna be like when I was born. <laughs> and it almost, it almost is that, dude. Really? No and way. It almost is that. My cheeks. I realized that I won't never be clapped again, so I decided to play Yu-Gi-Oh and be competitive. What? I don't know what he was on right now, but um, no, I, I've been playing. <laughs> I've been playing ever since, pretty much. I started when I was in uh, primary school, like five or six years old. Wow. Or seven years old. I, it was. 2002, 2003, I started playing on the playground as, as we all did back then. Uh, I've been playing, I played my first locals, I think, when I was 10. Mm. Like 2005 ish, 2006 ish. Started to go to more and more locals when I was like 11 or 12. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've been, I've been playing ever since. Bro, I could tell. Like yeah, I, I've uh, I've looked you up on YouTube. I'm like, why does dude got deck profiles from yeah. like, from God knows when? You know, <laughs> uh, uh, like yeah, no, it's it's I I literally I've been playing ever since the first time I actually got into the game on like a more competitive level because when I was ten, you know, my 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 first when I went to my first locals, I played Exodia as as you know as a true duelist nice. does. When the game became the the game was like super expensive back then to actually play like. Like around 2007, 2008, 2009, like the Dark Arm Dragons, the Judgment Dragons, the Charge of Light Brigades, that kind of stuff. The Crush Cart Virus, that was not. I was I was trying to beat people with like Lone Fire into Titanial at that time because that that was my budget. <laughs> yep. When I was like 12 years old, 13 years old, uh, I was. Well, some could say I was ahead of my time because that you know 2011 yeah. Lone Fire into Titanial that was kind of good in 20 in 2008, not that much. I mean, brother, in 2006, I think I was using the Chinese version of Exodia. The one <laughs> card with all the five pieces together. I was normal summoning it and I was saying, the game is over. <laughs> and the guy was like, no way. I was like, yeah, the game is over. Go fuck. You... So like what what made you, so like, okay, so you have, that's like kind of like where you started. Um, obviously the game was really expensive. You're still a kid, can't afford all the cards. Um, but what, when did you transition to like competitive? so yeah like i said I, I i was i was i kept going to locals kept going to locals i don't know why it didn't even throw me off that i was like bad i don't know for some reason it just didn't i just kept mm -hmm. playing I, it just fascinated me and uh, i i grew up with i grew up with it and i kind of grew into it and uh, at some point i never got to go to like bigger tournaments because also just like my mom wouldn't let me go to like tournaments that were like further farther away i i wasn't able to go anywhere until I reached a certain age, and then also there was a time where, you know, decks like Glad Beast were, like, way more affordable than, like, it was actually a meta deck at some point, Glad Beast and Lightsworn got some, like, when they put a Charger Light Brigade into some special edition, that became affordable. Yes. Um, as well as Judgment Dragon getting the ulti reprint, which 
from Naoji's perspective, you can't imagine that, but that actually was a budget version of the card. The all TJD <laughs> back then was like, I don't, I don't even remember the price, but it was budget compared to the secret rare. Jeez. So after they did that, like lights one just became quote unquote, a budget deck that I, that I could afford. Um, that's when I started to play like more seriously. And at some point when I turned 15, 16, you know, I was able to like travel tournaments. Uh, I traveled to my first, my first European championship was 2011, which was in Spain. It was Madrid. Yes. Uh, my mom wouldn't let me go as usual. Um, but my dad flew there with me hey. and that's why she hmm. let me go. Shout out to he, dad. He, Yo, shout out to that. With me. That was my first European Championship. I did. I went. I, I went like X three. I was. It wasn't. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad either. I was kind of. I was proud of it. And then from that point on, I started playing. You know, a couple. I I went to the. I only went to the German YCSs, which the first one was the very first European one was Bochum. Um, also went X three at that one, and then the second German YCS. I skipped a few in between. Was YCS Leipzig, which was my first YCS top with wind up. That's now. It's either late 2011, but I want to say it's early 2012. Windups came and, out. Oh uh, yeah, why, yeah, because windups came after, after, after YCS like Toronto, right? What I don't know which which Canadian or American YCS was yeah. in that time frame. I, I wouldn't know, but like, um, it was. I, I I'm pretty sure it's 2012. I'm pretty sure yeah. it's like March or April 2012 that okay. YCS Leipzig happened. <clears throat> which I that was my that was the first time I topped, and um, the same year. European Championship, wind-ups again. I, for some reason, get top four. Hey! Even though, even though I, was not, <laughs> I was not among the top four players in the room at that time, but I did get there. Uh, meant, you know, qualified for Worlds at, what was I, 16? 16, yeah. Uh, went to Japan, somehow got third at Worlds, and uh, yo, ever since then... I have not missed a single European YCS. That, I mean, that, you that, that didn't mix a, a single remix. Like we saw you in different <laughs> remix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nesh is jokes, bro. I hate you, Nesh. <laughs> no, but, but I'm not going to lie. That, that gave me some chills, though. Because, like, like you went to Worlds. And, would you believe me if I told you I actually watched that feature match? I watched you play that guy in um at Worlds. It's actually a YouTube video of it. It's scuff as hell, though. The quality is like 360p. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. <clears throat> no, no, I see, I've seen it. Yeah, but um, no, that's that's actually sick, and wow. So so, and then from there, you just kept on going. That uh, that was the moment where there was basically no going back, right? That was the I was I was old enough to where my mom couldn't stop me from going to all yeah. the tournaments, right? Yeah. And uh, I I was just like completely sucked into the game. Uh, I was before that. I was I was already like you know super dedicated, mm -hmm. and I, I I've been playing the game ever since. But once I've you know tasted the uh. The high levels of competition, I was just like, I was, I was gone. It was like, I, yeah. I, I've, I've, like I said, I've not missed a single European YCS ever since. And uh, let me ask you something yeah. crazy. Let me ask you something crazy. If you didn't see that success early, would you still, like, would you have still kept playing Yu-Gi-Oh? Because I felt like you had two events back to back where, you know, I think it was a good confidence booster, especially like you're very young. But it, it kind of told you that, yo, you know, I'm actually not too bad. Like, I think maybe I can do better and compete at a higher level and higher level. So, like, uh, yeah, um, what are your thoughts I, on that? I think it definitely played a big role. Like I said, before that, I would occasionally skip a YCS, right? Because it was, like, um, throughout Europe, like I said, I only went to the German ones. Um, partially because of money, partially because, you know, I, I was very young. I was like 15 or something when, when these happened, Six start of 16. I uh, wasn't able to, like, fly to France, fly to the UK or whatever just to play a YCS. I, I mean, I was, all, I, I was not going to stop playing Yu-Gi-Oh! if I didn't top that European Championship or didn't go to Worlds and that I, I was not going to stop playing. But I don't know if the development that I went through would have been the same because the dedication of, like, trying to get back there right is like cuz that's one of the things that has been has kept me going for like all the years is like trying to get back to you know the world stage for example um it's something that i think people that have never been there unfortunately can't really really understand what it means and so i mean had i never you know experienced that it i probably would have ended up being less dedicated at some point in, 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 in throughout the journey. You know, at some point, maybe I would have said like, yo, uh, 
enough is enough or something at some point. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, because I feel like... I, down, yeah. Because I had similar, like, I guess, experiences where, like, I, I, I went to, like, a couple tournaments early on and I did, like, relatively, like, pretty well. And I felt like that kind of, like, gave me my confidence boost. So I kind of, like, wanted to see what your story was like. But, but yeah, dude, like, getting to that world stage is crazy. Like, I've only seen videos... And like I've watched like the live stream and stuff, but I think that's that's where I'm trying to, uh, you know, maybe I see you in there next year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that'll be that'll be sick. Um, so so like fast forward to today, right? You're, it's it's 2022, and yeah. bro, you're you're like one of the the biggest content creator in the space right now for competitive Yu-Gi-Oh and even just overall Yu-Gi-Oh in general. How how did you decide or to pursue this? Like what what made that or gave you that push to pursue content creation? Well, I wouldn't say I'm one of the biggest yet, but I'm I'm trying. It's going wow. well. Um, yeah, now you're kill you're killing it. It's being humble, but yeah. I mean, yeah, you you grinding all right, <laughs> all right. Your okay. numbers are kind of cheap. Yeah, mm. appreciate it. No, uh, it's 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 kind of a random story because it, it's just it, it happened it, it happened really randomly. It's like it's a it's just a, a combination of different things of like Master Duel dropped, and I just randomly asked people like on on twitter or something which i hadn't been using very much uh previous to that i was like yo what what would people like it if i if i stream master duel right just when it dropped just because i'm sitting in front of my pc anyways you know i have this webcam like what if i what if i just did that like you know and uh it, it's like at the time it was like one of my most liked tweets ever and so i was like okay i guess i'll do it i guess i'll just do it and uh it was it was very fun because, I mean, as it turns out, I just, like, I love Yu-Gi-Oh. I love talking about Yu-Gi-Oh. And so, like, while I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh, I can also talk about Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I just enjoyed it, right? And it's it's also, at the same time, I was, like, towards the end of my, of finishing university, right? Last couple of months. Um, and so, while I was finishing uni, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to stream a couple days a week because I enjoy it. And so, the numbers have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And, like... Uh, to uh, to an to an extent where it's actually like oh what what like I'm making money with this now like I mean like not like not like full time income or anything but like you know there's money in this uh, as well as just like being very enjoyable and so um, throughout is the last couple of weeks, hmm? is master dual enjoyable to you you like it <laughs> it's all right Come I mean at the beginning it was more hype but yeah so like. I decided to, you know, while I was finishing university, I just decided to to give it a shot. I mean, uh, throughout the throughout the weeks, I I changed from Master Duel to uh, to TCG again because like that just like Master Duel to me didn't live up to the hype. I suppose we're gonna talk about it as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, content creation has just been very fulfilling for me because it just as it turns out, as an adult, you don't have as much time to spend on your hobbies as um, you did as a teenager. <laughs> and that has yeah. been something that has been something that I have been struggling with as a lot as I have a lot of a lot of other people, you know, with Yu-Gi-Oh, I feel like, at least from what I hear from like other people saying, you know, from from chat stories or whatever, they always wonder how you, you know, keep playing competitively while also maintaining, you know, healthy relationships, social interaction and uh, work, all that kind of stuff. And so being able to kind of combine these two things into one has been very, very cool and allowed me to spend a lot more time in this game than I would otherwise be able to if I worked a full-time job in mm -hmm. a different industry. Um, yeah, and that's how I decided to, you know, try it. Also because like, the, the feedback has been so um, encouraging. I have a question about that because also in the past for me, it was very hard for me to keep a relationship and play Yu-Gi-Oh, to be honest. Uh, like, how did you find yourself to manage a relationship and play Yu-Gi-Oh competitively because I think it's I think it's a topic that not a lot of people go on yeah but I think it's actually very hard and you don't always find the a supportive person that allows you to go to such events so tell me about your story about with your relationship and how she supports you I mean it is it kind of helps that she knew about it going in because she she basically knew what it is because she used to play back in the day a little bit as well. She didn't really play competitively when we met anymore. Yeah. But she knew what it was about, basically. Um, and at some point, I mean, she realized she realizes how important it is to me. 
and so the support just comes naturally right if i'm if i'm gone for four or five days for an event she is sad you know yeah uh, which is okay sleeping I, with warfa kind of, <laughs> <huh>? sleeping <laughs> yeah, with warfa <Farfa. laughs> sleeping with warfa yeah. sharing sharing the same blanket with warfa you know she 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 is yeah. uh, she has to she has to you know get through some stuff with me but um no at the end of the day oh, it's is, just is it about, hard? like is it hard or uh... She understands. Oh, she's. Oh, she totally understands that. No. Well, she understands it. She is uh -huh. still sad about it, right? Mm. Like every once in a while, and then it makes me feel bad when I go somewhere because I know she she's sad about it. But at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with like missing your partner, right? That's also something yeah, we that's... have to like. You know, and, and sometimes you just miss that person, right? And that's like in, in some shape or form. It's also be. It's also like a. Uh, a testament as to like how well you guys fit together right it's like it, we have, well when, when he's not here i miss him when she's not here i miss her right it's like well, damn yeah, i'm okay, feeling lonely well, right now bro uh, not what, a bad thing. you know what's funny yeah, what you know what's these, funny what are these relationships that you're talking about dude yeah, during my <laughs> high school experience when i was engaged with someone uh during the night i was grinding on dwelling book oh okay? this story so i was crazy. never available during <laughs> You got to tell the story. Yeah, Bro. yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Continue, continue. <laughs> I had to tell the story. Yeah. Okay, so during the night, I was grinding on Duel. So I was never answering the phone. Never. Because I was turning off my phone and grinding on Duel. Brother. She was thinking I was cheating on her. <laughs> she called my sister during night. And my sister was, what, eight, seven years old? In order to know if I was at home. Because I was never answering during the night. And she thought I was cheating on her. Yeah. That shit was crazy. Bro, I... And then I had to broke up, but that's sounds stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> but... Because I never told to anyone that I was in a relationship with that I was playing. And I know that's... it's It was hard back in the day. It was harder, I think, back in the day. Not right now. I think it was harder when you are in high school and you have to tell your partner, yo, I play Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, we are, we, I've been through those times there where people in high school thought it was not cool to play Yu-Gi-Oh, right? It's just like at yeah. some point you grow up and you realize, you know, judging someone for doing something that they like or love is just like, it's not your weakness, it's probably theirs. Yeah, but, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Yeah, but then you it's realize, pathetic. then you realize growing up. As teenagers, it's, it, 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 it can be difficult, yeah, I get it. Well, the high school scene is vicious, man. They, they be going on you for anything, like, <laughs> but, um, okay, let, let's go back to the topic of I know we talked about you going to events. Your girl's like super sad, bro. You, you coming to Niagara? Like I know you're going to YCSU Church, right? What, what's what's on the what's on the other agenda for YCSU to go to in the future for you? Uh, well, Niagara just happened, right? So I can't. Uh oh, I mean, uh, I California. Time travel. <laughs> um, I haven't. I I don't have anything planned for the rest of this year. Okay. Um, at unless they announce another european ycs but i i will definitely go back to the us at some point i've been there a couple times in the past uh i, st I still have to you know actually top an na event the two i went to I, I lost round 11 on both of them so i kind of have to you know at some point try and redeem myself over there gotta pull a um, billy on our side <laughs> yeah no one one place that i actually do really want to go is Ni uh, niagara at some point that's just like really tempting for me because i've never been to canada yeah. Uh, and another YCS that I really want to go to at some point is uh, YCS in Cali again, which I think is happening this year. Yes, right? I don't Pasadena. Think I can make it happen this yep. year. Yeah. <clears throat> but another YCS Pasadena is another one that I really want to go to because there's a lot of people. Yo, come to Pasadena. I'm come. <laughs> when is it? <laughs> it's November uh, 8th, the first weekend of November. Okay. I can't promise. I'll, I'll, I'll look into flights, I suppose. But I, I haven't. I don't have a plan yet. All right, Chad, you know what to do. The flame I'm on. Just go in on him on Twitter. <laughs> um, but okay. Okay, okay. Okay, we talked about where you're going. We talked about your origin story, where you came from. Now let's talk about what everyone wants to talk about. The ban list. The ban list. Bro, what were your initial thoughts when, when they got dropped? Like, and you went through everything. Well, first of all, it was probably the most hype I've ever been when seeing a ban list. Because it's the first time I was live while it happened. Yes. As like, I like I, I've been staying, I've been staying live longer for like the last weeks. I've waited every time until six p.m. my time to see if it was gonna drop, and then when it finally happened, I was like, "Yo, <laughs> rewarded!" Is this happening? And then, I as I scrolled through the list, I was um, I was happy about some stuff, but then I finished. I was also unhappy about some of the stuff that I didn't see. Yeah, and I think that is the best way to phrase it: is that. 
from the way I look at it, most of the things that are on it are reasonable decisions. Most of the things that happen, like if you told me, oh, they're going to ban Hulk. I'm like, yeah, fine. <laughs> they're going to ban Snow. I'm like, yeah, good. Rip Jesse, but good. Uh, if they're going to say ban Ronan Todin, I'd be like, you don't have to do me like that. Like, I don't know why we have to be personal <laughs> right now, but I, I get it, right? I get it. Same with, like, Chaos Ruler. Like, a lot of the things on it make a lot of sense. It's yeah. it's more about the things that are missing, in my opinion. I don't know what your guys' oh. opinion on it is, but that Brother, is my opinion. Uh, would you say that Pitcop protected the Mystic Mine from the ban list, too? Maybe. You are, maybe they have one counter on it. Maybe next time. And, I mean, that it, it's a good thing that you got substitute, right? Right? Like... I I I think I trade back. I I think I I think we're I, if they if, if they allowed takes these backsies, I, I I'm switching back. I don't know. I I wasn't serious when I said I wanted substitute. If it was for that cost, I'm t- I'm trading back. I would uh, I would take this moment to thank Konami for the amazing bandwidth. <laughs> we really appreciated the effort that you put in this game. We really appreciate everything that you made for our community. And I was very excited to read through that. Like, there were nothing better to do, to be honest. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom (laughs) of my heart. Everyone was expecting that. I think think you accomplished your goal. You made a ban list. Yeah. Okay. Uh, We can proceed, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Um, Man. So, I I think the thing that would help a lot of people listening in on, you know, the Goo cast is... When you, you have YCS Uchurch coming up, I'm playing in Ecuador the same weekend. Like, tell the people, like, how, how do you prepare for events? How do you decide what deck to play? Because I know, like, I think you're one of, like, the few top players that are choosing or actively choosing to play Sprite, for example, this last format or the format they're in right now before the ban list comes out. Um, and, and most people were playing, like, tier limits, right? So for you, when you, like, have this YCS that's coming up, you have the ban list that, dro- that just dropped. Like, how do you start about, like, preparing um, o- overall? So, uh, th- the first step in general at preparing is just getting a good feel for any given meta game. I would, I would say. So, like, my, my preparation for European Championship, for example, when Power of the Element dropped, my, pre- my preparation for the most part consisted in understanding how sprites work, understanding how tier work, and then, uh, like, analyzing what people are considering the standard. Because that's, like... Always, I think the most important thing is like understanding what you're actually trying to beat when you go into a tournament. It's like, okay, at Euros, this list can be considered, quote unquote, the standard, the expected sprite list. It was like a mash of like people played like, I don't know, Talents, Dark Ruler, and maybe a bunch of hand traps, right? That was like the standard sprite. And then what was the standard tier at the time? It was like some people played, a little, few people played like Danger tier, but for the most part, it was like a more balanced approach to tier limits, playing like, maybe like you know king of the swamp stuff like that was was relatively popular they they would end on like meta noise maybe they would some some of them would play saliac but for the most part i feel like meta noise was still considered like the better trap card um and then off of that i just tried to see you know what are my options in terms of how can i beat the things that other people are doing i never really tried to be like okay this deck is the best deck in the format. I have to play this deck, right? I'm just like looking at what everyone else is doing and I'm trying like, okay, how do I beat this, right? And sometimes it ends up being just the best deck in the game right now or like what everyone considers the best deck in the game, um, like highest power level or whatever. And sometimes it's something else, right? Like when everyone played Zoo, uh, some ins- maybe it was correct to play Zoo, but I thought it was better to play just Paleo because why not just auto win against all the Zeus, right? And it's like... Sometimes that pays off. Sometimes you just rather go with like the standard stuff because there isn't anything that beats like full power Goki, for example, full power Spiral. Those are formats where like you couldn't exploit the top deck being that. So you just had to like build your deck to beat the mirror, for example. But um, to take tier as a current example, I, I, I see the appeal to tier elements to a lot of people. The one thing that really throws me off is that as a good player and deck builder, I don't feel like I I gain enough of an edge when I play mm. tier mirror. That makes any sense? No, it's it like, does. It does. <clears throat> I lose I lose to people where I feel like I'm not supposed to. Right. Uh, it's like the issue they, of dollar, like, right? Like the the dollar issue. Like for how, example, yes. dollar is like a big deal, and then just in general, the deck not having as much room for 
tech cards, non-engine. I feel like if you take tier, if you take danger tier and you you just stick too much non-engine, too much of like Nibiru, Super Poly, um, these kinds of cards. If you put too many in, like you can play some, but like at some point your deck just starts becoming a little inconsistent. Um, Shout to Gunther. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he just yeah. He, I mean, he made a good uh, a good uh, hand trap sprite without sprites. Uh, that was a good, <laughs> a good attempt. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, that's my take on that. That's that's literally sprite, but a worse dash version of a sprite because then you make yourself weaker to hand traps. I I don't like the elements with hand traps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, what's your take on tier element with hand traps? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. I'm actually curious. Uh, I think it was solid for that tournament but on the other hand i still don't see well now without ronin maybe it actually is better than hand trap sprite but for the most part i felt like hand trap tier was a less efficient version of hand trap sprite simply because it felt like it didn't have as streamlined of a combo like if i have if i have i don't know a, a beaver a sprite blue and three hand traps my hand is like gucci but like if it's yeah. a sharon and the rhino heart it's like not as clear as to like where this is going even yeah. though most of the time it's probably fine sprite it's like the way i see it is like sprite is a hand if you tell me you're playing sprite and you're op you're gonna open two engine cards and three non-engine cards i'm gonna be like yo i'm happy i'm chilling i'm playing mm. sprite with three non-engine cards i'm happy if you tell me the same thing about tier elements i'm not so sure anymore because i'm like okay what are my engine cards then what am i milling right because then yeah. a hand with three non-engine and two tier element engine cards can can be very good but if yeah i totally agree on that not. to be honest <clears throat> and that's also what i told you to gunter yeah like that's that's literally my same take to be honest on that but there is a thing that we have to discuss about because i know that we disagree about that oh and i'm what is i'm it? ready to pull up a fight on that <laughs> because <clears throat> i'll say Luna Lights. you want because because <laughs> we have a different approach we have a different approach on flute gates now you hate flute gates i don't i i totally disagree on banning flute gates because i think traps are supposed to be insane because okay. I, I, every, because otherwise, okay, I will tell you my take. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think you already know that because I already popped off. I, I already popped off in your Twitch chat multiple times saying, that. <laughs> I think traps are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <clears throat> I'm a stalker. Anyways, so I think traps are supposed to be broken, because otherwise no one would run traps, for the uh, and cause of the piece of the game that we have right now, why the game goes so fast. We need a traps that literally locks your opponent from playing. Otherwise, you just don't run traps. Like traps are use are a useless part of the game. Otherwise, so mm -hmm. what's your take on that? Because you said multiple times you want to ban rivalry. You want some. You are. You, ban, no? you are right that if we didn't have floodgates, a lot of people just wouldn't play traps at all. Uh, I I will say that is correct. I would argue that that would be still a healthier game than with those. Like I'd rather people not play traps than uh play these kinds of traps yeah i mean quick play spells are hand, traps right in a way quick play spells are low-key traps in my opinion like if you really think about of, them like they're, they're kind of like a more modern way modern approach to them right because mm. they actually fix some of the weaknesses of going second but yeah no i mean it's it's right it's right people wouldn't play traps if they weren't that broken you are you are correct in that i still believe that there is a ways to make trap normal trap cards that would be good enough to see play they just haven't done it they just have been too lazy to actually design powerful traps we've seen approaches as like an example would be like ice dragons prison dogmatica punishments like traps that have recently been released that were like almost good enough to see play uh and they just like didn't go the extra mile right of like making interactive traps that are good enough it's kind of it, it seems like the lazy approach to me to just be like okay yeah we're just gonna slap it on a floodgate and that immediately makes it relevant and then b i think only because you know the game is super fast and traps don't see play i it doesn't mean we have to make like uninteractive stupid trap cards we can we could also argue that instead of doing that they could also spend some effort of maybe fixing the the core problem without making floodgates to solve it right they could maybe maybe we can find ways to slow down the game you know maybe we can find ways to make traps relevant again in actual interactive traps because i would argue the whole point of traps the whole point of why we would want traps in the game is because they're interactive right, the, right. that's what makes that's what makes it so yeah. fun is like you know how interacting with like what could that set card be you know how am i going to use this how am i going to use my interruption best right instead of just like oh, i'll i'll just flip it 
And she's like, okay, yeah. can you out it? No, it's like, oh, unfortunate. And it's like, okay, but you were arguing about goals and match rivalry. Mm-hmm. But there are so many other problematicas. Like we have still Featherstorm, we have still different dimensional ground. But let's say that we want to get rid of all the floodgate traps. It's not only that, there are also floodgate spells continuous. Like I'm, I'm giving you a quick example. Like for example, during the Prankings form, you could play a card like Gods and Match, or you could play a card like Power Filter. Power Filter says, neither player can special summon monster with 1000 or less attack. For example, that's, that's another floodgate. So how do we deal with all of those floodgates? Ban them too. It's all... <laughs> I, mean, it, it, I, I do realize that it's never going to happen, right? Only because I say I would go about it that way. Like, I would literally remove it from the game. I don't know if by mass banning all of them or if you could actually change the rules concerning continuous cards in some, in some way, shape, or form. I don't know. Like, they've changed the way the game works fundamentally with, like, master rule changes before. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like that would be something maybe to look into i don't know how you would solve it um and i very i'm very well aware that it's never going to happen that they're just going to put like 20 30 floodgates onto the balance it's never going to happen it's just yeah. a it's something that i would like to see um but it's never going to happen but i have i have actually proposed potential solutions to this because um the mystic might i know, I know right. for a fact Pac was was hanging I'll, out dude, in my, in I, was my about, chat when I, I was just about to talk about that like i was yeah. watching your yeah. Your stream. I think you made a YouTube video out of it as well. You guys can go. By the way, guys, if you're if you, we'll take a quick ad break. If you guys don't know who this man is, go check him out at his Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Joshua Schmidt YGO. You can also check out his YouTube and all of his socials in the description box below. Um, he's an amazing content creator. If you actually genuinely want to improve at the game, or even just for the funnies, um, you know, there's some moments in there like Denko Seca, but uh, we won't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we won't we won't elaborate on that. You can find that out for yourself. Um, but yeah, just just. I saw that. I saw that. Just to go back to the, the whole topic of like card design, because I think yeah. this is actually a, a beautiful topic. Because so this was yeah, this was something that sparked first when we had the Mystic Mind debate yeah. for the ten thousandth time, like a couple months ago. It was yes. like people were just like, "Why don't you just play? Why don't you play any outs?" I think this was during like Despia, uh, yeah. <laughs> like these times, right? Well, that meme was hilarious. No, why don't you just play the out, bro? Like draw the out. Yeah. And so there's two things wrong with that argument. The first argument is that only because an out exists in the deck doesn't mean that a card is okay, only because you can theoretically out it at some point, right? Time Even fucking though it God. Huh? Time fucking God. You say that. Time fucking I mean, God. Those, those fucking bra- bra- brain dead aunts that say <laughs> <"Hold> <laughs> the fucking God. <laughs> All right, Trev. Chill, chill, chill. Sorry, but sorry, sorry. I will say that only because it doesn't justify, like, you know, Mystic Mind isn't justified because people could maybe out it, right? If people were actually playing outs, it would help it, at least. It would help the problem, right? If they're not going to ban all the floodgates, it would at least be better if we could go back to main decking outs. But my argument back in the day was that simply being able to play outs to floodgates is very very dependent on the environment on the meta right because like in certain metas you simply cannot play back row removal because they just suck in like 90 percent of your games unless you're hitting the one guy playing floodgates right and so like asking people to main deck outs for 10 percent of their matchups when like 90 percent of the matchup the cards are completely dead is is stupid and then saying they got punished for not playing outs when like like, what do you mean punish? They made the right decision, right? They made the right decision to not play an out to this card, right? And so, like, you know, what are you saying, right? Why does why does he deserve to be punished for making the right call when he played, like, nine rounds in a row, he played against people without back row, and then round 10, he loses to the guy with floodgates in the main deck? Like, it's not a punish. That's not how it works. Yeah. And um, so my proposed solution, instead of, you know, banning all the floodgates, because I realized that was never going to happen, is simply create... Simply create a card that is good enough to be main decked, even in metas, even in environments where there's no back row, that could theoretically handle back row, right? Like, not a card like Cosmic Cycle, not a card like Twin Twister, but a card that's, like, generally good, main deckable, which probably means it would have to be a quick play spell of some sorts, because you'd you'd have to be able to use it going first and going second, because otherwise it's not going to end up being a main deck card, it's just going to be a side deck card, we have enough of those. Uh... And, like, this is why I always enjoy playing cards like, you know, Sprite Smashers. This is why I enjoy yeah. playing cards like the, the Virtual World Continuous Trap that just pops. <laughs> <and it's a laughs> 
Chuji, and that's just like cooming right now. <laughs> yeah. Cards like because those. Eh? I was waiting. I was waiting for you to go over this topic. I was yeah. actually waiting because I remember <laughs> watching your stream saying that. I was like, you were like, okay, if I can have a quick spell that can deal with Mystic Mind and it's also mainable, I would play it. Why the fuck are you are not on Runics? Well, I love Runics for that reason, that they have these abilities, right? Oh. But also, you know... I didn't see you play right? Runics during your last event. a different no. list. <laughs> Have you ever... Look, look at the, all the Runic cards, you know? Look at the name and then look like slightly under it. You know what it says? <laughs> spell. <laughs> no, but... I don't need that. They don't all fell. Yeah. I don't need a battle first. No, bro, a Radicator you don't need a battle and cancer. You don't need a battle phase. You, you're not going to need a battle phase. You're not going to have cards. <laughs> what I are you think attacking with? That's why you I was trying it. Dude, yeah, that's why I put hand traps in my in my like sprite deck and I saw, or sprite runic deck, and I saw you tried the same. Because it's like, bro, like it's so disgusting. I love all these quick play spells and then the interactivity of them. But that is exactly what I love <laughs> so much about archetypes that have these types of abilities, right? Of yeah. like having the flexibility of playing a card that is like good interruption, but also beats random floodgates, right? Like, uh, mm, yeah. like sprite smashers, like all the like the whole runic deck is is amazing in that in that regard. I just wish we wouldn't rely on them making that happen for every single archetype over and over and over again. I w I wish we just had a good staple card because I feel like it is about time where. Um, we get the new version of, you know, Cosmic Cyclone, Twin Twister, MST, that whole, like, era of cards, which have been main deck before, like, the majority of Yu-Gi-Oh! When, like, when MST started becoming not good enough kind of anymore, they made a new one. I don't know what they made first. Cosmic. I probably, I Wait, think Cosmic. Was I think when they, banned, when they banned MST, they, they, made... they made Twisters. Twisters, I yeah. believe, was a card after that. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cosmic came out eventually after it's just like at any point when these cards like started to become outdated when it's like okay mst just doesn't seem to cut it anymore we're like okay we're gonna make twin twister because that pops too now right and yeah. that's like, okay cool we're gonna play that and then they also made cosmic at some point no cosmic was the second one yeah yeah for sure cosmic yeah. was after twin in like 2016 or something we were like okay there's cards where you actually care about sending into the graveyard so we're gonna give you cosmic so you can even main deck cosmic and we main deck cosmic for a long time in in different decks sometimes we main twin twister over it but like the point stands these cards were main deckable for throughout the majority of the game's history until like yeah. 2018, maybe even after that. Sometimes 2019, you could even play them again in like toss format. And it's just like I think it's time we get the next one in mm. in the, the thing. But like at this now, it needs to be a card that doesn't only pop spell and traps because you know you have to be realistic. 2022 Yu-Gi-Oh, not every deck is about traps anymore. Yeah, and not every day. It's, destruction. it's oh. literally runic destruction. You can just main only that. You and can, play yeah, one I mean, extra deck monster. You could do that, yeah. I mean, if that if that's really if, if you have great use for the extender, you could do that, yeah. I don't think I don't think it's that bad. Like yeah, but just I main three destruction and one deck extra deck monster and sit on it. It's not that bad, but it's also not optimal. <laughs> that <laughs> good right it's like sometimes it's okay but like for the most part i'd feel like you'd it have to be a very floodgate heavy meta for me to actually do that um but it is theoretically possible right yeah. it is theoretically theoretically <clears throat> you are right you could do that uh the runics are a step in the right direction i really love that engine in general uh it's, it, and yeah, really if it, it wasn't for eradicator and spell cancer right now in like every single tier deck i i would definitely try to you know break the runic cards um and do some some crazy funky stuff with them because i think they have insane potential yeah. um do you think a sprite is dead how do you think that is a way to i don't think sprite is dead, though. i don't think it too i think evil twin is still a good a very good engine and uh, also there are there is the evil twin that's aqua you can still make toad yeah so i think i think that there is definitely a way to go on that i think i think it's very good still but now tier elements didn't get any hit what do you think about tier elements right now over sprite especially right now i i think it's an amazing deck going forward i can't really you know i you can't i don't think you can say anything else about it the deck uh, losing snow is like i think a big hit for the danger tier deck but like the core engine still stands even before Magnificent Mavens, which I mean, that's a whole other story. But uh, <laughs> Mama, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> even yeah. before then. Even before then, I think the deck is incredibly strong. I personally still think a lot of the issues that I had with it 
the reasons why I didn't play it last format still stand uh, as to mm-hmm. that maybe the tier mirror is fine now that like snow is gone because snow even helped you dodge a lot of the stuff that got rid of dweller for example in the tier mirror like you could play a card like imperm yeah. and if they didn't go for elf you would actually be able to like imperm the dweller because they had to shotgun it because of cards like um, dark ruler and uh, they would just change snow to it right which now they can't yeah maybe there's a solution to dweller in the tier mirror but for the most part i am a little bit afraid of having to play you know five or six or seven tier mirrors like, if the deck's considered like tier one you might have to play like eight or nine in 11 rounds of swiss yeah and i don't know if i see myself <clears throat> consistently you know winning six or seven out of eight or nine tier mirrors yeah i think so i will yep hmm? no no continue continue yeah okay. i will um i'll spend a lot of time trying to um exploit tier limits. Oh, did, maybe you, did you exploit maybe... the new cards? Darkwing Blast? Did you read the new cards? I did read the new cards, yeah. I, I did I did make one stream where because we were like not sure whether we th- should start uh, testing for Utrecht or if we should wait for a ban list, I made a couple streams where we just talked about that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so what do you think about Fenrir? I love him. Fenrir is the... I, I cannot pronounce the first part Fenrir? of it. Sorry. Fenrir? Fenrir. Fenrir. The that one? Yeah. yeah, the first part of the name. Most of the, like, can you read the first part of the name for me? Because I Shangri-La, really cannot... Shangri-La. Right? Shangri-La, yeah, Fenrir. Shangri-La. Fenrir. Shangri-La. Yeah. Shangri-La, yeah. yeah. That one. <laughs> Shangri-La. That card is crazy. Sure. Dude, they can make that card literally though. Starlight. And that would be a card to be crazy. I think, I think yeah. it is a, that's a staple. What do you think about that? Do you like yeah, that? Because not, I think it, that's a staple not, in every deck. He's broken and I love him. Yeah. It is it's kind of one of those cards that I just talked about with the only exception that it doesn't out Mystic Mine, but like for the most part this is the closest I've seen yet to the card I was just asking for when we talked about Floodgates, right? A generically good card that you can main deck in every single deck and that gives you answers to a lot of different situations, right? Mm-hmm. The only two Floodgates that this does not even like this this never answers is like Skill Drain and Mystic Mine. Every other Floodgate, theoretically, if you have Fenrir in your deck, you can't out it. Mm, and I have a question it. directly to Konami, to be honest. Konami, why do you hear like Josh and you are like basically when Josh asks, you give, and then when I ask, you don't give a fuck. <laughs> no. <laughs> and the new tier element support, we got to the grief. That's literally a. It's an out, what, but like, I, I think that car is cope, though. I, I don't think, like, I think a car is like okay. Like, you're talking about the one, the spell and trap removal for tier limit? It's, it's called grief. No, I'm talking about. Right? No. No, Tier Elements Grift is the one that special summon Tier Elements or Pieces Frost from the deck. Oh, the teleport. Then oh. send one monster you can The same type of trap attribute to the graveyard. I think I think that's actually nice, to be honest. I, I, I like it. And there is also the Spell and Trap one, but I think it's mostly for side, to be honest. I would yeah. not mean that. It's... I I, from what I've heard, the biggest uh, support for Tier Elements is the Sprite Link. Because <laughs> yeah, it just swooshes sprint? early. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. Like, early. yeah. Like, that card like that's that's broken. Like they designed it for Sprite, and then we're gonna run. What? <laughs> that's. <laughs> I wish I wish Merly wasn't level two, dude. Yeah, dude. And Merly then... being two is crazy. Like the things they do, they things they the things they do with Elf and Sprint are not ethical. I think. Now, to be honest, I, uh, I had a crazy interaction came up. I, I darked my opponent's Merly, mill three, hit a Ronin and a swap, made Toad. I was like, yo. <laughs> I'm feeling well, crazy. Not anymore. Yeah, not anymore, Sag. No! Then I think the, the biggest discovery in this set, in my opinion, is one of the cards with the best potential ever printed. It's World Ocean Dragon Zelanantis. Yeah. Ah, the Link, the Link 4. 4. I yeah. think I think that's beyond broken for the amount of disgusting thing you can make. Like, you can be a dirty, dirty dog using that card. <laughs> like, you can literally banish your entire then create a U link, but that's that that's that's literally for you know like code talker stuff. Like we are not going around. Like we are not fucking with that shit. We are gonna go over. Like we are gonna banish our sprite elf. We are gonna bring it back, and now we can link with it because now it was not link summon. That's another thing that you can. Wait, remember. really? That the ruling was? I didn't know that. Oh, good to know. Resets well, it. Yeah, no, it resets it. Welcome to my world, baby. Wow. Welcome to my world. Wait, what the heck? Then, I was thinking of like basic armor can... stuff. Like I don't know, but all right. Armageddon too. Like now, once per turn effect are not anymore. Once, once per turn effect. Then if you summon it, going second, the best, like one of the, like, like little application that you can use this card for. 
breaking the opponent board by setting his stuff like if you activate the book of eclipse without the counter side so i think is the, the potential of this card is beyond broken I, I i would definitely try this out and maybe build something around those lines yeah. Wait, the way I see the card, the way the the reason why I think it's problematic design is um I don't see I don't judge the card as it as a link four. The oh, way I yeah. see it is just like yeah. because it need because you can just link any any link four into it. I kind yeah. of feel like it you you have to add its effect onto every single link four that already exists, right? It's kind of like Appaloosa now negates three monsters. And it also does what that card does, right? <laughs> yeah. Access Code Talker yeah. can pop your entire board, and it does what that card does, right? Saryuja draws four, puts three back, summons a monster from your hand, and then it does that, right? And it's like, yeah. that's how I see it. That's why I think it, it might become problematic in the future, because like, yeah, for sure... Yeah, now every Link 4 has an additional effect, basically. Yeah, yeah. You, you, can basically, you can basically add this effect onto every single level 4 in the game, and you can definitely probably make like combo decks that just like spam... Like Saryuja, draw, summon from hand, then do this, do some stupid like re rearranging of stuff, re reset some effects, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, when I first read the card, I was like, if you don't see the one plus, you're like, yeah, why is this card good? Yeah. And then you realize, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, bro, uh, bro. They told me on stream. I was like, "Why is this card good?" No, but I yeah. think then like they tell, they, then they told me, "Nash, look, look, what you need to 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 use to summon." Yeah. I was like, "My brother cries." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, it was crazy. No, because think about it. Like, I think ev most of the broken stuff has always been related to like zoo monsters, right? So, like, if we think about like monsters, link monster, like link ones are really broken because of like the fact that you just convert any one card into whatever, right? I think that Link Four is similar because it's like a it's like stacking an XZ's on top it of is a link something. Four that, it's basically a Link One that needs a Link Four. Let's yes. be real. You're yes. never really making this with like two other monsters. It's just basically yeah. a Link One that needs a Link Four as material, pretty much. No, exactly. Um, and then there is then there is the last card, but I don't really know how to approach with this card. It's called Naturia Mole Cricket. Naturia Mole Cricket is basically a monster that spams two other monsters on the board and potentially can be a third body. It's something that I would really love to do with, uh, um, with the new upcoming gar cards that are the Vernusilf, uh, the, the, the Field Spell and, um, and yeah. the Vera. Yeah, yeah, they're all like, the re they're all like reborns, yeah. They did yeah, win a couple so of tournaments in the OCG, right? You know that? Yeah, yes, yeah, bro, bro. yes, yes. You really yes. think I'm not peeping the goo from the OCG? <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, we'll go to, we'll go to like, the goo. The, the yeah, goo. we're going to go over the different goo, to be honest. Like, there are so many. Bro, uh, how do you feel about this set? I think he's one of the most broken set ever printed. Saying that right after Power of the Elements. <laughs> yeah. Feels like. I mean, it's not as good as Power of the Elements, I feel like. It just adds on top of it. It feels like Power of the Elements 2. Yeah. It's like, it's, like like, Duelist, it's like Duelist Alliance and New Challengers. Kind of. It just makes, like, the stuff that came out in in um, in Power of the Elements, like, even better, right? We get the second wave of Sprite support. We get the second wave of Tier support. We get incredibly powerful staples in, like, the Fenrir um, and some other stuff. The... The World Dragon Zilantis, I think is it's called, I haven't really seen being a problem just yet. I do think you can probably cook something up at some point. And, like, I mean, it's just a matter of time until, like, some very easy to summon Link 4 happens that has, like, some good benefit. And then you also want to turn this into that. Um, so far, I, especially in the stuff that I've been seeing from the OCG, I haven't really been seeing much of it. Probably simply because it doesn't really fit into tier and sprite. And that's what they've been playing for the last couple of, I mean, months now. Um, so maybe it's just a matter of time until that card becomes a problem. But I think at this point, it's not yet, even though the design is problematic. Uh, but yeah, it just feels like the it just feels like the DLC to Power of the Elements to me, kind of. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, there is actually like we already asked this to Farfa, but I think by reading those cards. This, this question comes like naturally in my mind as in pack mind. When will we reach a point of equalization in which Konami doesn't need to print a card that's going to be way more powerful than the other one? 
Yeah. So you mean like a point where you mean a point where like power creep has gone too far basically there's no yeah. more return. Yeah. Yeah, like like at some point, right? Power creep has to reach an equilibrium where a- every set theoretically is better than the next set, right? You know, there's some troll sets out there, but hypothetically, every set going forward should be better than the sets now. At what point does power creep just keeps on going and going and going? You reach that equilibrium point where power creep is at its maximum potential. They're like, you know, what's next? Do we play Digimon? Like, <laughs> like what, what happens? <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know when we're going to reach a point like that. Because I'm pretty sure if you would ask people like nine years ago when they dropped the Dragon Rulers. And yeah. people were like, yo, I've never seen something so broken. Yeah. <laughs> like, Power Creep is kind of crazy right now, right? Yep. And then it's like... You fast forward like a year later, and it's like the mermaid and stuff. Like, yo, mermaid's kind of nice, right? And it's like, throughout the history, there's always been points where people thought, like, okay, power creep has kind of gotten out of hand. Of course, the ban list at some point always kind of, you know, die, kills the stuff, anyways, right? At some point, maybe at some point another master rule change is going to be necessary like what yeah. they attempted with with links right i could definitely see it being the case like i've made the argument earlier of like maybe trying to fix the game in a in a way where maybe you can slow the game down with not with cart design but with like the rules right maybe if you think that's a way to maybe introduce traps back into the game right maybe there's a way maybe there's a way you can slow down combos by doing something to the rules of the game like similar to how they tried to do it with the extra monster zone um maybe that's going to be their their only solution at some point um because i mean the game is getting faster and faster and faster but to be clear i don't want the game to be like it was nine years ago or eight years ago even though i really like even though i really like going back in into like dive into retro formats i love playing retro formats um uh i i think the game has to develop right i think that's not a bad thing uh, i also don't think it's a bad thing that like the game gets faster because there are also certain skills that come with you know a fast game of Yu-Gi-Oh. there still is a lot of decision making and that's most what i care about uh you can have like you can have very healthy dynamics even in a fast game you can have very unhealthy dynamics even in very slow games right even even slow formats can be bad uh, and fast formats can be good so I always I always kind of judge the game. I, I don't I, I don't like to use terms that in my opinion don't really have much connection to whether the game is actually good or not. Like people always love to use indicators like how long is a game, right? How many yeah. turns does a game have? How um how diverse a metagame is is yes. is another thing that has nothing to do with whether the games are actually good or not, right? So what I care about whenever I look at a format of Yu-Gi-Oh is how well can I prepare? Like how much does deck building matter and how much does actual execution during the games like skill and such matter, right? These are the two things I care about. Everything else I don't care. Yeah. I can have insane expression of deck building and skill in one turn. I can have the same thing over 10 turns. I don't mind either way. Those are th- those are things that are not really connected to that. And so I mean, of course, for some people, it can feel too fast. It can feel overwhelming and stuff like that. But as long as I feel like the game is in a good spot in terms of just does the better player more often win than, you know, a worse player, I can still be happy with it. But yeah. um, I do think that if they if they don't do, like, if they don't do well with their ban list decisions in the future and also their card design they might have to revisit at some point because i'm not the only i'm not the only player right i'm not the only player who um was an happy about mystic mine i think you are i think everyone <laughs> is very happy about mystic mine and everyone wants mystic mine in their deck and yeah. i totally agree with konami do you hear I mean, me konami? i love mystic mine so much i even protect it right i've, yeah, I've brought true. you true <laughs> i've brought you your lord and savior beat cop from the underworld <laughs> yours was the same as... I, thought, I think that card is so precious it needs to be protected at all costs bro i was so I think confident you I'm sorry. so confident that after you and so many other people back to back to back events that that card would get smoked on the ban list seems like i was I wrong so <laughs> i thought so too but i think they um i think they are kind of to ban people instead of cards yes oh sorry. <laughs> jeez 
Okay. I will say, I will say, even though I would like to see Mystic Mind banned, I think Mystic Mind. I, I would, if I had to ban one card right now, it'd probably not be Mystic Mind. It'd probably be a different Floodgate. Mm, that's that's because I mm. think Mystic Mind is as as stupid as it sounds. I think Mystic Mind is more interactive than than some other Floodgates out there, and I think Mystic Mind is like finally the one card that makes people play like actually change the way they play the game as like people can't play like the really really all in strategies anymore they can get punished by it right and the one cool the one cool thing about mystic mind which is weird to say i know i know um but the one cool thing about mystic mind is that you can actually make good meta calls like the one that i made at euros right mm. is something that i i felt that was a was some something where preparation really paid off and making a good meta call actually mattered because, you know, everyone thought they were prepared for Mystic Mine and they were just, like, taking advantage of the fact that hand traps kind of sucked. So they played these all-in danger tier lists. And, you know, at that point, having Mystic Mine as a tool in the arsenal to make a good meta call like that was um, was was good for me, right? Yeah. Um, of course, the card has advantages like this, but it also has massive disadvantages, right? Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The card should still be banned. But um, that is... That is something that isn't possible when you look at a card like Skill Drain or Anti-Spell. It's just one of those cards, yeah, okay, gonna have to win the dice roll, and uh, you're probably only gonna be able to side deck that card. You can't make a meta call with Anti-Spell, pretty much. It's yeah. like, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna side it in going first and win. Uh, <laughs> Did, but here is the thing. Yeah. There is actually a very interesting card that is gonna come out very soon, and it's called the Laughing Puffin the Justin. The Laughing Wubble? It's an out to <laughs> Laughing Puffin the Jester Bird. Okay. It's an out to floodgate. Uh, let me read the card very quickly. If I, um, if I sub, yeah, it's a better trap eater. So basically for the chat, mm -hmm. if face up spell and traps is on the field, you can special summon this card from your end. You can tribute a winged beast monster, then tribute one face up, uh, then one target, one face up spell and trap on the field, return that uh, target to, to the end. But for the rest of the turn, you cannot use the same card that you bounced. So basically, Laughing Puffin is an out to floodgates. It's a way better trap eater. So now you got also your out to floodgates in. It's I mean, is it way better though? I I don't I think it's way better. I, I think you still have to kill them that same turn if you activate that. To be honest. <laughs> also, it's just like it's worse than trap eater in the sense that you don't get a body. It's just like it's exiled force for a back row, Nish. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? It's all this. What do you mean what's up with that? Exiled force is in twenty three, two thousand three. That's when he realizes it's not a good out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah bro Flood floodgates are crazy bro i mean like i was talking to like it's crazy i'm like that's exiled force for a back row he's like yeah he's like yeah that's that's, <laughs> that's all it takes yes. um, yeah <laughs> refuses to elaborate giga chat no, cause, cause, Yo, bro. dude bro to mm -hmm. be honest the whole mystic mind thing i wholeheartedly agree i think everyone's like saying like yo mind ban mine which i do agree man should be banned and people come at me on like honey stream they're like yo like but you don't want like mind ban i'm like bro 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 I want mine banned, but there's way other. There's so many other cards yeah. in the format that gotta get addressed. Like Ravelry yeah. is literally crack. Like that card is insane. First or second as well. Like I, I, I don't know. Like there's so many different cards. Like Dweller, bro. Dweller is literally absurd. Like there's so many like crazy, crazy cards. I'm like, like don't get me wrong. Mine definitely gotta go. But there's like if you want, if you want to talk about the cards that gotta go, there's like a whole list. Like at least 20, 30, 40 cards. And, and one thing, the one thing that makes Mystic Mine better than a lot of these other cards is that Mystic Mine is a board breaker going second, whereas most of the other ones are just like yeah. pilled on going first, having to go first, which inherently going first is already like better in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Than going second. Yes. And um, so having a floodgate that fixes going second is, in my opinion, more healthy than having flood like billion different floodgates that all win you the game even harder when you go first. Max your Mystic Mine. Oh, you have to choose between the two. Yo, you froze. You fro <laughs> you right now froze. Like you're sweating right now. You don't know what to choose. Bro. Tell me. Tell me. So, okay. Five months ago, I would have said Maxi, right? Five oh. months ago, I would have easily, I would have instantly said Maxi. But now I'm not so sure anymore. I think I might have to go. I think I might have to go with, um, with Mystic Mine, honestly. Oh. To keep or ban? To to keep. To keep. Oh. Oh. That's man. how crazy Maxi is. So whoever says that Maxi should be unbanned, 
watch out. <laughs> it's like, it's, the thing about Maxi is that, like, I remember, I remember times when we didn't even play Maxi in the main deck because it wasn't even that good. Bro. Right? I, I, it's, Nationals 2014. Um, Nationals 2014. I, I was, I played a bunch of that format. It's like it's no. mermaids and stuff like that, which special summon like crazy, but you still didn't main deck Maxi because there's yeah. like literally decks in the format where it didn't do anything, right? And so like yeah. Maxi is a card that relative to the time that it was released in is actually a well-designed card because back in the day, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It was like a tech card that if the format got out of hand, people would just start playing Maxi and you always knew you couldn't play, you know, the crazy, you know, combo decks that everyone like that sometimes they existed, but people just didn't bother playing them because it was just like, yeah, it loses to Maxi, so it's it, you know, it's 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 curtains, right? <laughs> uh, but like with um, in relation to modern Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't know if it's still gonna work out because I feel like the uh, the options are first of all, you have plenty of options to negate Maxi, which is that's the worst thing about Master Duel. The worst thing yeah. about Master Duel is not actually Maxi. The worst thing about Master Duel is that Maxi does not actually resolve. stop people from <laughs> playing combo decks. Yeah, because it yeah. doesn't yeah. resolve. Because They just love ha having outs to Maxi in that game. I don't know. For some reason, they think it's fine to have like a billion outs to Maxi. Yeah. They did limit cross out recently, I think. But They still. did. They limit yeah, cross they out. Did. Yeah, they did. Uh, I think that's my take on the OCG. I think... They are using Maxi as a sort of power filter, as you, as you said before. Like Maxi should be a power filter, but it's not a power filter right now, because there are so many ways to negate it. Without ways to negate it, it would actually be a power filter and would be healthy for the game. It's what, it's what Nibiru does, right? It's what Nibiru does exactly. Yeah. Like Nibiru actually does that because there is not many. There are not many cards that can actually negate Nibiru in like most decks. It's like you have cross out. That's it, and like you will legit not see decks like salad ever rise to like tier one again simply because if it was people would just nib, nib you and like your end board is a token mm. and so a card like <laughs> Nibiru, even though it is an unsearchable just three off hand trap right it's just like something that does actually have impact on the way people play decks choose what deck to play and yeah. like build their decks as well right and that's what i was thinking like maybe maxi could do that but I think in a world where we have Ash, we have um, Call by. Cross Out, we have Toss. Called By, I, it's probably just not going to be healthy enough. And so the way I thought about of it is just like I would I would rather have them keep Maxi banned and maybe maybe design a different hand trap. Yeah, that's so funny. The whole Maxi conversation wasn't that your first YouTube video? I just thought yeah, it was. This. Yeah. <laughs> what are what are what are the odds? And yo, your first YCS that you went to was eventually three years three years later you would win. What the hell? The... Uh, Madrid. YCS Madrid, right? Was that your first YCS? It was the European Championship, my first event. Oh. But it was the same venue. Yeah, yeah, no. It was the same venue that I won in, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. What the f... Dude, the world has a uh, way of... Talking about working events. Out. Yeah, let's talk talking about that. Talking about events. Uh, which event you felt the most prepared for, but you performed very badly? Mm, damn. Uh, yeah, dig world... deep. World I, I'm event. eating him out right now. Yeah, that's that's a punchline. No, it's an that's easy question. It's worst. It's it's worst 2018. Ooh, what happened? Tell me. Tell me more. Tell us more. Uh, I have brought weak decks to worlds before. In like two of the years I I went, I didn't bring. <clears throat> I don't think I brought the best deck because my preparation wasn't on point. But I think in 2018, looking back at what everyone else played, I do still think I had the best deck in the room. And I lost very unfortunate matches. Uh, and uh, yeah, I didn't top. I got like 10th or something at top 8. I, I went 3 Tell and 2. More. Just... Tell us more. Which deck? How did you I lose? Played, I played Altergeist, but my hey. version was like really, really good. Like my, my Altergeist, it was basically the format was Goki and Altergeist. That's pretty much it. Everything else didn't really compete. And the way, the way it worked was like Altergeist would always win going first. Pretty much, like I mean, if you set four against against Goki back in the, in that format, it was just like the game's over. Like the, the deck can't break it. And um, going second, I was main decking. I was main decking cherries. I was main decking gamma, and I had imperm right. Uh, so basically, the most impactful hand traps as well. And like I, the the the, the best thing about the deck was honestly the side deck as well, because I played I played like I made some stupid good discoveries when like because I like I I tend like to read all the cards. And like I played, um, what was it called? Vanity's Call. 
Oh. Vanity's call. Holy, that's the tech of the day. <laughs> the goo of the day. You know what that does? Yo, explain it. Explain it for the people. Look- okay, you're, okay you, you're looking up right now. Yeah, I'm okay. literally looking up. Shut up. <laughs> no, Vanity's call is the counter trap, right? The one that uses a chain link for, right? Vanity's call like is a counter trap that says you can only activate it as chain link four or higher and you pay half yeah. your life points. And it negates- I used it in imaginary Yu Gi Oh! It negates well, no. the entire chain, right? Yeah. Yo! I used it in imaginary Yu Gi Oh! This card is the crazy! Why, <laughs> the reason why this card was so broken in that meta was basically. Like I said, going first, you would always win against Goki every time, unless they had, you know, a card that was at three that recently got banned, which is Red Reboot, right? Red Reboot was staple. That was the biggest problem of Altergeist, right? That was the biggest problem of Altergeist. And so I played this card, which the way you would use it is if they go for Isolde, right? They go for Isolde, they go like chaining one Isolde, chaining two, a Goki, chaining three, maybe another Goki. And you would use any of your other traps. And if they had Reboot, you would just van this call and negate the entire chain, right? You'd, Yo. ne- you'd negate the reboot, you'd negate the ice hold, you'd negate the Goki searches. If they didn't have reboot, even if they, if they didn't have reboot, you would find out right there, you would still chain the card to your own trap, and it would negate your own trap, but it would also negate the ice hold and the Goki. So if they have reboot, they lose. If they don't have reboot, they still lose, because you still have all your other backer and you've negated everything. And that card was literally insane. And then I also played uh, Yo, a card notes. called... I also played Mistaken Arrest because that was a spell card that destroyed Goki. So I literally had six cards that didn't care about Reboot. And I also played, like... I, I was I was hella prepared. I played, like, Inspector Border, which, like... I, I lost to Bowden, which I, I really shouldn't have because, uh, like, Inspector Border wins the Altergeist Mirror, like, yeah. alone. Yes, it and, uh, I remember it. It was very He did not play it. He did not play it. I played three, and I just didn't see it. Um, mm. Stuff like that. It's, it's just, like, I beat three Gookies in Swiss. I lost to Sky Striker because I had Imperial Order in game three, and he I didn't draw a monster for eight turns, and I died to beatdown from one Shizuku. No! No! Because I had to, like, set hand traps and shit like that. That's what I lost to, because I didn't see... I had, like, protocol. I had spoofing ready. <laughs> well, not protocol, because then I had spoofing, and I didn't draw an Altergeist monster or an Altergeist card until I died. Uh, So that was kind of annoying. Damn. And then, yeah, I lost to Bowden, and I lost to the Sky Striker. I beat three Gokis with losing, I think, two out of three dice rolls out to them. Uh, it didn't really matter that much. And then I got 10th by tiebreakers. But looking back at that tournament, that is still, I think, one of the best decks I've ever brought to a tournament. Judging from how the meta turned out, I think I should have done better than I did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. But I mean, <clears throat> I, I, I like the call of Vanity's call. Like, I, I know about the card because, as I said, I was playing Imaginary. You, you set four cards call which counter trap you have and like they activate a card and then you say okay i'm gonna activate vanity's call uh, at the end and then the guy always chains wire traps if you didn't play imaginary you 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 are actually one of the most fortunate guy ever like because (laughs) because that shit was Uh, (laughs) eight yeah so that's crazy that's actually dude i I was looking at i was reading more of the card i'm like yo that man that's dude there might be a format where that card comes up Back again in the meta. Yo, thank us later, boys. Thank us later. <laughs> Man. That card is very good. Um, I mean, there, there is another thing that I really would uh, like to ask. Yeah. Um, do you have a player that you looked up to either now or in the past? Like, is there a player that inspired you? Uh, it's a tough question simply because I've been playing forever, ever, ever. I have... I've had a yeah, lot of different, you know, to, testing. To be honest, in those kind of scenarios, if you really want to flex, you could say, I looked up at the <laughs> and, Yeah, that's, well, no, that's you, not, you're, you're gonna crash. that's not, that's not my, no, nah, that's not, that, nah, I, I don't do that. Uh, I, I, I've been influenced by so many different players, but back in the day, the first people that come to my mind are actually people that you wouldn't, you would never know the names because I simply like, it's, it's basically at like locals level. Uh, mm. The first, the first big names I I used to hang out with was like the back in the day, like U- United Gozus, like Peter Gross, uh, yep. Claudio, Michel Gruner, 
these types of people. I didn't look up to all of those, but like those are like the the first people where I like actually got like to know people that were like more successful than me, right? And it's just always like, yeah, okay, I want to I want to be like those. Cuz I remember specifically Peter has had one three YCSs. Yeah, Peter Gross is crazy. I I know the name before too. I even, before I even, you know, won a single one, and I remember talking to him like preparing for tournaments and stuff like that and like telling him, "Yo, one day I'm also going to win YCSs." Uh and he was like, bet. Uh, <laughs> Gave you the bet. Okay. <laughs> Yo, brother. I, bro, I, can, I can already imagine the scene. Like, you will be like that. One day I'm going to also win the wife. Yes. Oh, I'm sick. Hey, you did. Hey, you did. Wait, so like, what happened? So when you when you won your when you won your first was it? Did you call him? Like, or what? Did he did he ever hit you up? Oh, they were there. I think they still played. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus, bro. I mean, um, I I think uh be, before we we end, um, I think I think we're coming towards the end. For for someone else who's trying to, for people that are trying and listening, you know, they're trying to get into the competitive scene. Do you have one piece of advice that you can throw to to the people uh, before we close the podcast out? If if they want to like enter this competitive scene, get good, all that's all that good stuff. The the I get this question a lot, and the first few things I always tell people is to not get discouraged when starting to play the game because you're gonna lose a lot, and uh, I see a lot of people gravitating towards playing the easier decks in these scenarios, right? Like. I don't know, the Eldritches, whatever, like these types of decks, right? Where you like rely on floodgating your opponent. You try to, you're like, oh, I don't know what these cards do. I'm not going to read them. I'm just going to floodgate you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try, you know, and bring this to an even field by playing, you know, floodgate so I don't have to think. And I always tell people to not do that because you that's probably the worst way of ever improving at the game. Because at, at this certain locals where you enter with Outlitch, yeah, you're probably going to do better than if you played like an, a hard deck to pilot, right? But you're also not going to learn from it. And I think the process of the process of failing in order to learn from it is the, the most important part to actually becoming better at this game. Like no one has ever gotten good at anything without like trying and failing be- beforehand it was not different for any of the the top players it was not different for me i've been you know like i've been playing this game literally since almost 20 years and i didn't come out the gate win my first tournaments uh i've had my fair share of of lessons of tournaments i performed badly in of 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 like ideas that i had that didn't end up working out i've made my fair shares of of mistakes of misplays all that type of stuff. Being afraid of that kind of stuff and getting discouraged by that type of stuff is um, is something you have to learn how to get over. And that is, I think, I think the people that stick with the game throughout these without, you know, turning into, you know, I'll, I'll always play the floodgate pile. Oh, I guess I can't, I can't play the hard decks. I'll just play the easy decks, right? The people that get through that time, keep playing, keep learning, keep having, you know, the drive to actually try to, to improve. I think those are the ones where that, that, that's what basically separates people from like, you know, the, the top players is like, that's, that's where you'll see people getting results over time is if they don't fall into that um, pattern, I think. That's an amazing take. So guys keep up the grind and don't discourage yourself. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you guys for the podcast. Follow him. Remember to follow this man. Because this man is the go. Oh, one sec. The go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But 100%, guys, if you guys already don't know who he is, check him out in the description box below. Um, Joshua Schmidt is an amazing, amazing player to learn from, uh, an amazing content creator as, as well. So I highly encourage you guys to uh, check out his content. And, guys, thank you for uh, for another week of the GooCast. See you next week. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet.